So I have been a computer nerd pretty much ever since the concept of computers started out. However, I'm a computer nerd like, hmm, how can I say this? At this level. <laughs> and I wouldn't know how to program a, a computer if I tried. I've been able to get in the back end of some websites and do a little manipulation of some of those if-then statements, Brian, but that's about it. So today I'm bringing Brian Wong to help me out because I want to take a real deep look at what what is XAI doing? <laughs> I know, not Tesla. Okay, what is Tesla doing? What is XAI doing? What? How is it all going to be differentiated in terms of building the biggest supercomputers the world has ever seen? Because Elon says that's what you have to do if you want to compete in the 21st century as we continue to unroll it. Uh, Brian. Um, yes. How are you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm doing good. So I Sorry think you know. That. I think you know a little bit about computer science, right? I mean, you spent a little time uh, mm -hmm. in the computer science world <laughs> looking at mm -hmm. some of these uh, big, big subjects. Right, right. So, um, but it's it's more about um, being up to date on what's the, the current things happening with AI, because clearly, the stuff I learned in my degree is, um, you know, other than you know, the theory stuff, which you know stayed the same. What's actually happened? has gone um, very different, particularly the last, you know, 18 months since Jack GPT and with AI, uh, all of the old rules, you know, Moore's law, all that kind of stuff is um, not what applies currently. So uh, in terms of the, the question of um, XAI and X, so the announcement was that um, XAI has raised $6 billion dollars uh, I think an evaluation of eighteen billion dollars. No, that, that, uh, that was the that was the going in valuation. After the raise, the company is now valued at twenty four billion. Okay, yeah, post money valuation, right? So, so now now twenty four billion dollars, um, but six million dollars of, of cash, and um, most of that is going towards the, the uh, supercomputer. So the announcement that I saw was that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that. Um, by 2025, they will make um, a supercomputer which is four times larger than the current largest uh, GPU cluster. Right. So, um, unfortunately, the, the information and details around what the largest GPU cluster is currently is um, not confirmed. It, it's you know somewhat secret stuff. Okay. Uh, because you know, but we know that. Who probably has it is you know Meta or uh, Microsoft OpenAI slash OpenAI. Uh, Microsoft owns OpenAI and they have that stuff. And it seems that it's about a hundred thousand NVIDIA H100s. Okay. So the NVIDIA H100 is and the H200 are the latest chips from NVIDIA. Right. They have announced a, a B200 chip. Um, which they you know have shown and probably are making some, but you have not built a cluster out of those yet because they have not built a hundred thousand of them and you've not done stuff with it. So the, the B200 uses less power and is four times more powerful, right? But doesn't does not exist yet for any GPU cluster. So the current largest GPU cluster is probably 100,000 h 100 mm -hmm. Um several reasons for this is that um there's only about 2 million uh, H100s that are built every year. Um, that's the, the rough production rate of um, NVIDIA. Uh, so then they switch between which uh, chips they make. Because TSMC, Thomas Semiconductor, makes those chips. Right. So you can switch over to the new chips. So the existing chips, the one that largest GPU cluster, 100,000, um, it's also at about the level where you break the grid. Because oh. when you try to put 100,000 chips together, sucking 400, 700 watts, right? You're using about all added up, maybe 100 megawatts. Um, <laughs> and then that starts to be a problem for the electrical grid that we have. Even though you have like nuclear power plants producing about a gigawatt, um, hydro dams, <clears throat> the biggest one, three gorges again, producing 20 gigawatts. And... Um, coal plants roughly at about 300 to 500 megawatts. But the problem is that you send the power, the grid thing to something called 
um, <clears throat> distribution transformers or uh, step down or step up transformers. Right. Stepping up and stepping down the voltage because you got you know all this power coming out. You cannot plug into a power plant. You right. know, just like you know, think of it like you know one of those cartoon things. You know, you plug in that boom and you're all black or whatever like that. It doesn't work. You have right. to adjust the power. Um, anyway, so largest one is probably hundred thousand uh, H one hundreds, and then they said they would make one four times more powerful. That kind of is uh, the B two hundred. The B two hundred chip doesn't exist yet, but by twenty twenty five, when you're done your your new thing, you'd have a hundred thousand B two hundreds, and you'd be, be like, times. yeah, and before number powerful, right? So that seems to all make sense. They would make a supercomputer with a hundred thousand B two hundreds, which would be four times bigger, more powerful than what we have today. Some caveat around that is they previously said that they would scale up to a hundred exaflops and you know, back two years ago and said, you know, by October this year, they would get to 100 exaflops. And that would be Tesla. That Tesla said they would do that, right. And then that that would be, you know, fifth largest or, or you know, some level of, of a AI cluster for that. Everyone, you know, the 10 top leading companies all have more, maybe, maybe more, maybe like 20, have more than 100 exaflops. 100 exaflops is equal to about, I think, um, 20,000, 30,000, 25,000, each 100 is about four petaflops. Mm -hmm. So if you just like do a crude math multiply, then that's 25,000, right? So the 100,000 H100s is 400 ectoflops already. So the, the issue is like when we say bigger than whatever, <laughs> everyone's in a big race, everyone's making huge um, supercomputers. So it's like in 2025, Pretty much all the top players will have a 100,000 B200 supercomputer version. Yeah, a, a variation. Okay, so then, so then Tesla, of course, famously, I think, already has also uh, uh, 85, uh, 85,000. Is that so? So they, they said at the end of uh, the, or the, the end Q1. Of the uh, they, they, and the Q1 thing, which was, you know, like it, it happened in April, their earnings call said at the end of March, they had like 35,000 right, right. H100. And they said by the end of the year, they yeah. would have 85,000 or more. So, right. Good. And that would be in addition to their expectation that they'll have 100 exaflops, teraflop, I forget which flops <laughs> of Dojo. So if Dojo, on the one hand, and then they've got the NVIDIA system on the other hand. Right. They have their dojo, which is their own chips. Right. That they announced it at AI Day a couple of years ago. And then they also have NVIDIA chips. But NVIDIA chips are clearly superior, it seems, because they're like getting better in leaps and bounds. But the dojo would also be getting better in leaps and yeah. bounds. But we um, don't know the breakdown um, between the dojo and the... Um, and the NVIDIA chips. Although we do know that they're building a half a billion dollar, um, five hundred, you know, five million dollar uh, dojo uh, um, facility in New York. They, they made a groundbreaking. They made an announcement about that. So, assuming comparable um, levels of power and stuff like that, you would think that would be roughly the equivalent of a ten thousand H one hundred place. I see. Okay. All right. So. All right, let's so just for fun, um, let's think about it in terms of Tesla will have amazing amounts of compute by the mm -hmm. end of this year and will undoubtedly buy additional compute in 2025. Yeah. X.ai will buy this problem claiming 400, uh, I'm sorry, four times as much as whoever's the biggest now in 2025. Right. And Tesla will be somewhere in that range. Maybe maybe it'll be two times as great as anybody else. Maybe it'd be three. Mm -hmm. Is this all about, uh, hey, look at my V8 and this guy, look at my you know Super 8 and hey, I got a V12. And I mean, is, is this a bunch of, um, of male um, ego yeah. talking? Or is there significant benefits to having 300 versus 200 or a thousand versus 800 uh mm -hmm. you know of the, of this compute power the uh, power and quality of your ai uh, scales with the training 
it's it's like it's um you know the research papers talk about you know like how this translates you know this much power this much performance so it's um a pretty clear like if i have this much compute I one get. times i get this i get one over here if i get 10 times i get more over here um it's so it's pretty much that whoever has the, the most uh compute wins it's, it's like um but you know, wins what? Mike, bring, bring, come come back then for me so mm -hmm. wins what okay if i've got uh, 110 100 uh, 1100 horsepower in my under my hood and the same weight car and you've only mm -hmm. got 900 horsepower in the same weight car and and our transmissions and torque and everything are fairly consistent my 1100 is going to win the race it doesn't necessarily right. mean though that it wins in terms of daily use it doesn't mean mm -hmm. it wins in terms of safety so what do we win if we get there? Don't you have to have, so, like uh, last year, we didn't have enough compute to mm -hmm. handle FSD. Now we do and excess mm -hmm. and above. Don't we have to have something to compute in order to justify having another hundred, you know, or thousand or whatever units? Right, right. So you're taking the compute and then you're applying it to data. Right. Right. So when we make these large language models, the, the chat GPT, the Grok, they're all taking pretty much all the data that's electronically available on the internet. Right. They're taking it all. Right. So the reason you end up with a, roughly the same result is they're all going at the same data. Right. Um, so OpenAI and Microsoft do it. They grab the internet. The internet being roughly 40 trillion tokens. So it's a measure of how much data there is, right. right? So grabbing the entire internet, 40 trillion tokens, right? So because they're starting from the same point, and there's a research paper that says this, if you start with the same data, whatever you do to it, you know, training AI-wise, you end up with roughly the same result. So then it's like, how well did I process it? Again, the more processing, then the better it is. So the way to differentiate, you could differentiate if you had different data. data. Right. So if I had, um, you know, like you know, real world uh, video data and I had real world audio data. So what we say and what we speak, mm -hmm. you know, then I could then have a new result. Right. Because it could then learn from us. It could in the uh, Tesla um, FSD where they're mimicking the best drivers. Yes. You know, it wasn't just saying, okay, how do I turn here or there? It's like specifically these guys, these guys are great. I'm copying them, right? So if I was taking AI and start saying, okay, instead of just crunching the internet and then it basically crunched Wikipedia, crunched whatever, and I'm getting these answers back, right? All the books. Then um, if I say, no, no, I have a live version of Albert Einstein you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Elon, I start copying those people, then you can start getting some different results based on, okay, I have less compute training than you, but my data is better. So now I can win. But we have not gotten sufficient differences in the starting data. You can, you can imagine Google has access to YouTube. They can say, okay, you guys can't steal our YouTube stuff, you know, just like this. And then we can start using that data properly. So there could be some differences in, in the data, but we have not um, gotten to a level where um, one particular group has clearly superior data that gives better results. You know, you have some that has a bit more, right? but we have not seen Google Gemini be better, right? right. So whatever data they're doing with um, YouTube, Google search, whatever they're doing there, have not made a difference because we now know that um, OpenAI is still in the lead. Microsoft OpenAI is still in the lead, right? Right. So, so because we're looking at um, huge amounts of data, everything on the internet, all this compute, which is like the the um, XAI I think will be like sixteen hundred exaflops. Right. So you don't have to know it's, you know, it's a number, it's just a, it's a huge number and more is better. And it's getting better at roughly four to 10 times every year, maybe less. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're trying to speed up to get to a lot more as compute. But it's like now it's like we're taking like all of 
internet data, adding on to that to get even more data. How do you do that? Like everything on the internet, how do, how do you, you you have to record video, record audio. You have to, um, you know, like for Tesla, you're having uh, 5 million cars recording driving data, 10 million cars recording driving data, yeah, uh, yeah. more cars. Yeah. So the amount of data that we're talking about is everything on the internet and then 10 times more, 100 times more, insane amounts of, of that. So, but to differentiate um, XAI, uh, OpenAI, Meta on that level, it's, you would not think that some group would figure out how to get a hundred times more data than the other guys. Yeah. Right. If you're doing it, you're all spending the money. Yeah. And it's not like you're doing, you're crunching 10 times the internet. It's not like, oh, they do that in secret. Yeah. You know, some little yes. Manhattan project. Yes. It's like, no, it's like, wow, you're doing all that. It's like, I can see you from over here. I can <laughs> have a satellite heat imaging, seeing what you're you're doing with your data center. It's like, you're, you're doing, you know, you're not building the great wall in, in secret, right? It's okay, like, it's right. over there. Okay. So, yeah. so let me back up again then, because it's, it yeah. blows, it's, it's blowing my mind. It's, it's breaking my brain. Okay. Is there a point at which the amount of compute is going to be all you need? I mean, it's just like more compute. Yes, it might be used for some esoteric kind of, of answer you want. Like, is there you know, is there any additional alien life in the universe, but it wouldn't be useful, let's say, to create AGI or, you know, or AI. Is there a, is there a level at which the top seven, 10 guys will have enough? Uh, I would say no. Is there, okay. is, there, is there a limit to intelligence? No, there is not. <laughs> okay. Right. So it's a question of, you know, when do we start figuring out something entirely different? where um, I'm no longer um, doing it based on, I'm dialing it up to, to 11, I'm dialing it up to 11 million, and then I'm getting more stuff. Like you have to like change from large language models to something else or large language models so different yeah. that it's like, you know, a million billion times, it doesn't matter anymore, right? So they're researching that, you know, like um, the lead AI guy from Meta, Jan LeCun is saying, yeah, large language models, we're going to crank it up. It's a solved thing. The big guys are playing it. They're just dumping more and more at it, right? But then I'm working on something completely different, right? And that's why he says we should work on something completely different in order to get a leapfrog ahead, right? So, but for the big companies, it's like, while this curve of more power, more data stuff keeps going up, I have to keep dumping more money on it. It's like uh, Google search, right? <clears throat> more search, more power. I get a better search. They win a uh, search and that's search. worth, you know, $80 billion or whatever, $100 billion. If they stop slowing down they, and they use that to kill Bing and Yahoo and everything else, right? All the other guys who are second, third place. Right. That's what they're thinking for AI. It's nice. like, I got to keep doubling down my bets, 10 times my bets. Because if I slow down, I stop. The other guy goes ahead, and first prize, yeah. you know, in in Glengarry Glen Ross, first prize is the is, is the Cadillac, second prize is a set of steak knives, third <laughs> prize is you're fired, right? So so that's their uh, all in bet on this thing, and it looks like it'll continue for several years. At some point, it will stop. Yeah, maybe uh, in terms of like the the the. Um, models of the algorithms and stuff or something new comes along yeah but until that happens they are on a treadmill that cannot stop okay all right okay so now elon famously last week i i was surprised it didn't break the internet when he said this but it just it got normal headlines he says by next year we'll have agi right. what do they mean to you <laughs> So the uh, the problem is uh, artificial general intelligence is oh, yeah. when, when yeah. is when you have AI artificial intelligence um, smarter than than humans. Right. Um, so the different definitions of that it can mean smarter than all humans, smarter than the smartest human. Um, so the the problem when you say that is you don't know specifically what that means. But by next year, that would mean that the current stuff 
is clearly not AGI. I can do AGI here. Like, you know, oh, can do a test as good as a lawyer, as good as a doctor. Yeah. So it's not that. Um, Sam Altman talked about it being AGI when it's world changing. Mm -hmm. So as, as amazing as the AI is now, mm -hmm. he said economics didn't change. Right. Other things didn't change. So that's part of what the Sam Altman's Elon are talking about, that yeah, right economics now. changing. So right now, I think Sam Altman put it this way, is that we basically just have better, the tools we already have are just better. Right. Right. And so right. he's saying, okay, when does the tool change? So mm -hmm. instead of making a better chat assistant, mm -hmm. we make something that's different than a chat assistant. It's no longer, it gets the, it, it gets the same result, but it's not a chat assistant. It's something beyond a chat assistant. Right. Right. So... Clearly what Elon and Sam and many of those guys are talking about is more um, amazing than, than it just got, you know, 10 times faster. It's, it's pretty darn good. It, it means something that is way shocking, right? That, that, that um, we expect major breakthrough. Because you're not going to say, okay, I dump out a GPT-5, I dump out a GPT-6. It's uh, better than GPT-4. It can make um, uh, Microsoft Copilot, which is already in all the software, is it, better, right? So it's just everything that you can already expect and envision and saying, okay, now it, it works better. No mistakes, no hallucinations, some other stuff is it, better, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's not that kind of um, shocking, whoa, you know, that that is... So pretty much he, he's saying... You, it, there should be a woe moment or many woe moments leading up to something next year that he's going to define at, at AGI. So, right? and some of those, and some of those expected are the things that we've talked about for years have been things like, I can't tell it's a computer, no matter what I ask it, I can't tell the, what do they call it, the, the, the Turing test, Turing test. Yes. And then the other one would be that it actually invents something. Right. And I have, as someone who has patents and is, many, many inventions under my belt. I always differentiate between what I call a, uh, what would you call it? The next, the next best way of making something like, uh, uh, you know, you make, you make a slight difference in the way that the curve of the hood is on a car and you get an improvement in terms of, of the way that the air flows over it. Um, and that is inventive only because nobody's ever thought to put that extra curve or that extra hump or that extra blade or whatever it is. To get, nobody's thought that before, anything like that before. So that's invention, as opposed to what you might be calling the aha invention, which is <laughs> which is kind of um, uh, out of the blue. It's kind of, uh, uh, you know, we've, we haven't even thought of the car before, you know, and right. somebody says, oh, you know what we should do? We should put four wheels on this large steel thing <laughs> and mm -hmm. drive it down the road at 80 miles an hour. Um, right. so in that level now, do you expect the level, the first level of invention is maybe good enough to call it AGI or do we need the out of the blue kind of invention? So I think the, the issue is that, um, right now we went from, you know, the chat GBT moment, we went from stuff that was clearly crap, right. Relative to people. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. It was like. It was doing 30% on some tests, 10% on some SATs. It was like, it clearly figured out. It's just like in the chess thing, yeah. where, you know, leading up to 1997, the chess game were still not beating most people. Then it started beating, you know, a international champion. Then it starts beating whatever. Then it started being a grandmaster. And then finally beats Kasparov. And that's better than, than, than all humans, right. right? So if we're in the phase of the AI you know, like ChatGPT is not clearly better mm -hmm. than the best physicists, the best mathematicians, best other stuff. It's now decent where it's like, it's better than any high school student. It's into the college ranks or whatever like that. Yeah. But then when you like, now I'm beyond um, Hawking and Einstein and whatever, right? And I'm beyond that in physics, math, everything, right? Then it's kind of like my frame of reference was people. My frame of reference was 
the dumbest person to the smartest person in these fields. Right. And I put that that measurement thing against the AI. I say, well, still, we're still here. We're still in the zone. Right. Right. When we break the zone and it goes like beyond human in physics, which means that you'd also have to have discovery. Right. It, you know, the, oh, you, okay. so that because that so that's that again might be what I'm trying to drive at. I like the way you put it though. So another way, way to put it might be right now, ChatGPT theoretically is diagnosing certain uh, conditions 97% of the time or 95% of the time better than doctors or as well as doctors or whatever, something I forget the exact thing. At the point that ChatGPT is diagnosing at 101% better than doctors, that would be very, very, very cool. But it right. wouldn't but it wouldn't be the same thing as looking at the chart and looking at the analysis that's going on and saying, you know what, what if we applied protein to that? And we've never tried that before. Right. Right. So something complete, completely groundbreaking starts tossing those right. stuff in. Right. right. So it's basically like doing, you know, like, I think that's something that some of the other guys, like um, um, the deep mind um, guy, right. has said right. that um, when, it starts doing Nobel Prize winning stuff, you know, yes. every six months, every yes. three months, every month, every right. week, every day, right? That, you know, starts to be the measure. It's not like it, you know, can answer this problem that we can answer, but it's hard for us. And now you, you do it kind of thing. It's, it's like, and it starts, you know, making the science go faster. Yeah. Right? So right. So right now we, I, it, it, it's pretty easy for me to, uh, imagine that within a very short period of time deduction interpolation extrapolation those kind and and uh, iteration could be could be done all all four of those could easily easily <laughs> all four of those are within the frame of of expectation that's probably going to happen fairly quickly with enough compute but there's that next level which some people would would suspect might be something only a human can do, but maybe it's really just a function of being able to interpolate and deduct, et cetera, faster, um, mm -hmm. more time. So you get a million years is only a second to the computer. Um, and mm -hmm. just by having that million years of, of human intellectual deduction, et cetera, you might get this breakthrough. Right, right. And um, so that goes into, you know, for people who've been studying AGI, artificial general intelligence, the, you know, the Ray Kurzweil of the world and that kind of right. stuff. Then they go to, um, is it just super intelligence, you know, beyond human, where it is just faster, right? Just faster, where it's like, okay, a million years and whatever, it comes, or is it next level? Yeah. Where it's like, right. where it's, it's like, um, where insight. chimps. It can be used the word insight. Insight. Yeah. Insight. But basically where, where it's like monkeys to humans, right? Okay. Where it's like you give a monkey a million years, it's still not, you know, did it come up with shape You have to search and maybe, you know, it randomly did something. Right. But you know, human, the million years, different right. level. Right. Okay. So if it's next level and it's faster, yeah. right. That's the, the level of, super intelligence that we're that we would consider right all right so now let's bring it back home let's bring it back mm -hmm. to elon has well at least three companies mm -hmm. maybe four counting Neuralink, but certainly three well four, five counting spacex but i would say that in particular tesla uh, x.ai and x.com those three for sure need this kind of massive compute and data storage. Mm -hmm. um, you need both, right? You can't, right. and then you need inference. Right. So you need, you need all three, right? To make it work. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you see, do you have any theory about how this plays out between the three companies? If, if Tesla has the second or third largest compute capability in the world, and if X.AI has the first or second or third largest compute in the world, and then maybe X.com has the 10th largest amount of compute. Anyway, do they then, you know, make an agreement, uh, put together a, a plan, something that's going to allow 
that amount of compute to now be used by all three as necessary to take up the slow times or the, you know, as uh, what, do you, what do you think is going to happen? So in terms of the, the collaboration between the different Elon companies, yeah, they, uh, we already heard like from the Walter Isaacson um, biography and from other, you know, like I think uh, or heard from Farzad, a YouTuber on, on Tesla who's used to work at Tesla, that there's, the Elon companies are viewed as one. You, know, you can work at, at Tesla and they can also do a project at SpaceX. You can do something there and, and move move all around. So that, you know, no barrier between them. So if they have 100 exaflops over here in Tesla and 100 exaflops or, or 400 exaflops over there in XAI, then when there's a need, you will be able to shift your jobs around. But even beyond that, um, the... Um, I think second largest uh, shareholder of Tesla is Larry Ellison of Oracle. Okay. <laughs> part of the, one of the companies that's part making some of the, um, the XAI supercomputer is Oracle. Right. Right. So not only is there no difference in, in, in the law of collaboration between XAI X and Tesla and SpaceX is that there's also collaboration with Oracle, one of the main uh, shareholders because they're buddies. Right. Yeah. And also it's it's like um you have all you know team Elon yes. and 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 Larry. Yes. And then they're going up against um Microsoft OpenAI right. and whoever else is, is on that team. Right. And then you have Meta, yeah. Facebook with all their companies and stuff like that, right? Yep. And they're stacking their stuff up. And they have Amazon mm -hmm. with all their stuff. They're building one of the largest large language models. So any organization that you're looking at allies wherever you can because this is a massive arms race, right? And obviously, and so, yeah. And obviously, yeah. Elon has a really great relationship uh, with Jensen, and he mm -hmm. uh, apparently also has a really good relationship with Dell. So does right. that uh, does that are those uh, th those would be uh, pr pretty good allies for this race as well, right? <laughs> right, right. So there's all kinds of teams and allies. Um, um, you know, Chinese companies as well, whenever the geopolitics, like if, we, if there's no geopolitics involved, yeah, you know, they would say, okay, yeah, yeah, come on in, let's do this. It's only because of the geopolitics that they're keeping it a bit of arm's length, right? right? But it's like whatever ally they can get, because the prize is everything. Everything. <laughs> so then it's like, I need whoever I can get on my side, yeah. right? Whoever's useful to me. And, you know, it's, you don't necessarily always add by, by, by addition, you know, by saying, I'm going to have you in. It's kind of like, no, you are a moron. I don't want you with me. So you can, you go help them. You go with the other, other team. You want them to slow them down. But it, wherever there's, you know, add a thing, I need more on my team because I'm, you know, just like, um, you know, when you had the, the browser wars between right. Google and Microsoft back in the day and Netscape and whatever, or you have um, fight over search, Google versus Yahoo versus whatever, Right. When you win, you win it pretty much all. Right? Yeah. You, you, the, yeah. It scraps for the other guy. Right. Right. So that's how they're viewing it. And, and wh wherever I can get on my side, who's useful, right. I'm doing it. Right. So, all right. So what? What? I think this is the last kind of category question I have. You have um, people that are saying that the amount of compute is a big deal. The amount of of uh, data that you are able to gather together is a big deal. The amount of data centers that you have to process all of that is a big deal. Um, but then the, even those things, and even when that's still on your computer, your laptop, or your phone, that is first level, that the mm -hmm. real money is going to be in the, in the apps, so to call that use this stuff and in particular in the embodied uh, products like <laughs> Robotaxi and Optimus. So what do you, what do you say about that? So there's um, something that Sam Altman has said about the apps and that kind of thing is that if you're just building your app right now on top of GPT-4, right? And it's doing something better with it, you know, need some extra value. He's when you get released to GPT five. If your thing is just something incremental or something like that, you will probably get steamrolled. He yep. said that you know those apps will get steamrolled, right? 
So the, the issue though, is that um, as we go from GP4, GP5, GP6, GP10, and we go from Grok 1.5, right, 1.5 with Vision, Grok 2, Grok 3, Grok 4, 5. as we keep going up, each of the models, and then same with Amazon and all the other ones, that um, uh, we're finding that, you know, intelligence is just like, you know, you know, the, um, I go to high school and I learn, you know, um, chemistry and physics or whatever, for, you know, for grade, grade 10. Mm -hmm. And then they, if we were making an app during that year and they're saying, okay, I'm going to make this app that can do this little thing better for you for, for math or for something else. You mean like a calculator? <laughs> like a calculator or something like that. Right. <laughs> but then suddenly in, in grade 11, grade 12, you go next level and all this stuff goes up and then I don't need that oh, device. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So whereas like I up level. So then the question is, you know, do we have these borders of intelligence? Like, are you thinking big enough? Can you project yeah. Yeah. where this is going right. so that I add an application that the large language models can't handle? Right. So for the large language models, the foundational models, and they're all constantly improving, the general theory right now is all the top competitors um, will all give away for free because Meta and the OpenAI have now gone to open source and give away to free. Right. But then they'll stomp on the application side of things, right? right. So the application tries to get ahead, but if this thing is improving to super intelligence, then what's my app? Like, what is the thing that this this uh, thing next year, AGI, that is smarter than um, the, the best human in physics, the best human in chemistry, the best human in math, the best search thing, the best storyteller. What is this other thing that I'm adding on to it that's yeah. going yeah. to be useful, right? So that's the problem with the thing is, is moving so fast. It's kind of like, what's better? You know, so it goes to the physical embodiment thing where if I have to stick it into a body, I'm entirely different. And then there's a physical layer because it has to be in something most of the time then you can have a sustainable moat in victory, right? Because if I have 100 million EVs, then yes, you have better software, but your software, you know, just like like right now, um, Apple has the power, mm -hmm. Samsung has the power because they say, okay, get onto the device. Right. You know, who, Google pays Apple to get their search onto the device. They pay them like $20 billion a year, right? Meta had to pay and bend the knee because they had the... Uh, application, the, the the physical device gateway, right. where we're carrying this around and we're that's how we're accessing it, right. right? So if you own the gateway to utility, and so it could be a human bot, it could be an EV or something like that, then or you own all smartphones, then even though the software is changing, mm -hmm. how the people come into it and pay their money, right, is what you're controlling. I control this doorway, this bridge to right. the stuff. So you're you're fighting over there to make the best one so like where I go to. But if I control the doorway, then that lets me um win, right? So so then what so then once again Elon Musk using verticality mm -hmm. could end up being um a winner at so many different levels. What do you right. think about the odds? I just uh, asked this the other day of another uh, computer science, you know, whiz, uh, Nicholas mm -hmm. Gibbs. Um, I asked him the same question. I'm curious to hear your answer. Do you think that uh, Tesla will shortly, I'm talking about, you know, year, 18 months, whatever, be offering Dojo or something like Dojo as a service? Uh, yes, I do. Um, because right now in terms of, um, you know, Dojo AI as a service, you have cloud and then all the cloud is going to cloud AI. So the current leaders, current leader is Amazon. Mm -hmm. Number two is Microsoft. Number three is, is Google, right? And um, the, the, the lead that Amazon and Microsoft have over Google is, is substantial. Um, so, but they're all going to, to AI, roughly making say $80 billion, growing at 20% a year. Um, $8 billion per year and, and, you know, going faster, you know, $100 billion a year and that kind of stuff. And they're spending, you know, a lot of money, say $50 billion a year. So they're, they're spending a lot to, to have this thing to convert to AI. So 
because XAI um, and X want scale, that if they're making, they're putting $6 billion into a um, 100,000 uh, B200 system, right? right? If they're only using it for their own application, if they fully utilize it, that's great. But they're not fully utilizing it, or they want to get to a system where it's like, I want to uh, offer more and then um, occasionally use more and then use less. Then this unused time, I want to make money on that. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm not making money on that, because um, Microsoft and Meta make money on, or, or sorry, Microsoft and Amazon make money right. when they're not using their full cloud, right? right? Then... I'm at a disadvantage. I can't, I can, if I'm offering cloud services, I can be two times, three times, four times bigger. Bigger, yeah. Right? And I can lower my cost because I'm like, say, some of my um, capital, CapEx and OpEx, I'm, I'm making money off of it. Yeah. Right? So there is a cost to that because I have to like build up yeah. a um, marketing arm. I have to build up um, some other stuff so I can actually sell it. Right? Yes. Otherwise, yes. I build it and then I don't sell it and there's a cost. But it's the kind of thing where if they can make that transition, then that would help them financially in, in competition with two others that are already doing that. And Nicholas thought that probably the deal with Dell might have to do more with the interface with that potential customer than it does with the actual supercomputer itself. Um, it, it certainly is, is possible. Like, like his speculation about that is possible. Um, it's the kind of thing where we don't know because if you're inside of XAI or whatever like that, you know, they could be right now they're in the race to catch up to mm -hmm. um, OpenAI mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. that stuff. So having the distraction of, oh, by the way, and have uh, one third of the team also work on commercializing a cloud and launching cloud service. It's like, let's just focus on catching up right <laughs> and then the the other part of it is that they have the you know they're, they're offering um grok and they're making money on that yeah so yeah. they have a means to monetize right yeah. so they don't have to have you know the cloud ai part of it but at some point you could see okay we got all this handle we're, we're chugging along now we add this other group and then we monetize and do because the incremental costs won't be that so it, it's more of a, a straight up um business business model decision yeah right it's, it's not about if you take away the the um ai part of it it's just like how do i monetize and then the staffing it's, it's a you know yeah do we have enough do we have enough bandwidth to actually bandwidth and money to be able to right. go out and do this other thing at this point yeah. right right it's just like i have walmart do I add the auto center to this right. thing? Right. right. Because I have the store, you right. know, I, I got the So it, it's a, it's a pretty much a straight up like MBA yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Right. So, but I think it makes sense that they do do it. It makes sense. It should happen in 12, 24 months, but it's not a deal breaker. Right. If they right. don't. Right. So interesting, Brian. And I'm mm -hmm. going to have Brian back because the second question I have about all this, I don't want to give it away to my competitors out there to, you know, do it before me, but we have a power problem. There's a problem with getting enough power to make all this happen. We can build the computers and build the chips and build the data centers, but, you know, there's not going to be any more dams. And I got that straight from the mouth of Brian Wong. So, so we're going to mm -hmm. talk about that. I came up with a few ideas the other day, which are probably really stupid, but I'm going to mm -hmm. throw them at Brian and we're going to find out whether he thinks maybe I'm onto something. All right. So next time, Brian, that's what we're going to okay. do. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Thank you. And to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you.